all right okay um, hello everyone welcome to today's uh, hit seminar so, uh, we have uh, uh, dr ian with us today uh, he is uh, currently a scientist at the uh, institute of uh, modern physics uh, in lancho chinese academy of sciences uh, he uh, completed a phd from university of illinois chicago in 2014 and then uh, was postdoc at bnl and the uh, uh, MIT before he moved on, moved to Lancho. Uh, today he will uh, discuss uh, on the spin momentum correlation in the uh, hot and dense uh, QCD matter and some interesting developments and some potential signatures of uh, uh, spin induced uh, polarization in uh, heavy end collisions. Um, okay, uh, he, uh, uh, thanks for giving the talk and please go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for the invitation and uh... Uh, so thanks for everyone for the coming. Uh, uh, so today I will talk about is the uh, spin and dynamics in the QCD methods. In particular, what I want to talk about is the correlation, the correlation between the uh, momentum direction of the spin carrier and uh, the uh, and, and the direction of spin in the QCD methods. So this is referred as the spin uh, momentum uh, correlations. So. Um, uh, this uh, this talk is based on the series of the talks that um, that are listed uh, um, listed here. So uh, as I mentioned uh, before the talk, I'm not the ex uh, I'm actually this is a new field to me, but I'm fortunate to have uh, fortunate to work with the expert like uh, uh, Long Gang Pang from CCU and Hui uh, Chao Shong from Peking Uni Universities. Of course, I should mention that Dr. Sui Niu, who was the postdoc in our in my group, and he's now a faculty at the Fulan University, and also Bowser Fu, the postdoc now at the Peking University who did most of the numeric works uh, I will show you. And so this is the um, outline of my talk. After some background introductions, I will explain the, uh, the qualitative features on the spin momentum correlation in the hot and the dense QCD matter created in heavy ion collisions. And in particular, I will mention its connection to the very curvature. And then I will uh, develop the response theory, uh, uh, the, the field theoretical method to evaluate such correlations in a systematic fashion. Uh, so we, uh, as a result, uh, we find uh, um, uh, several interesting new effects which are induced by the gradient of the hydrodynamics uh, of the hydrodynamic field, such as the shear induced polarization, namely the, the shear in the in the uh, the shear in the quark gluon fluid will polarize the spin in a specific way. And um, another example I will uh, tell you about is the grid and the mu B will also generate the spin moment correlation. And this um, signatures it might be important to explore the properties of the baryon rich uh, QC methods. Finally, I will give a summary and the outlook. And so to put, put uh, today's discussion in the, um, uh, in the broad uh, context, let me uh, remind myself that one of, uh, is the QCD, the equation of the QCD is quite simple, but uh, it implies a variety of the rich physics. And one of the goal of the field is to really understand the rich physics of the QCD map, QCD as sketched here from the, um, uh, from the, uh, from the QCD series. So uh, usually you can um, you can uh, this, uh, talk about the, the phases using the uh, the, uh, the the traditional landau Ginzburg paradigm, which is based on the symmetry breaking patterns and also on the uh, thermodynamics. And but the, the modern development also tells us that the quantum effects are very important in characterizing and understanding the. Um, as the, the phases. For example, in the 2016, the Lowbury Prize uh, was awarded to three, um, three uh, gentlemen here, here who, uh, because of their contributions to the quantum, uh, quantum and the topological phase transitions. So uh, I don't think I need much of the introductions in the heavy ion collisions by colliding the relative nuclei, so you create the, uh, the hot and the dense and the QCD matters. And uh, we know that uh, to study the thermodynamics of the uh, of such QCD methods, you can measure the momentum, measure the energy of the produced the hydrons. And the, the and the initial question is 
uh, what would be the observables that we can study the, the, the quantum effects? And the answer is, and, and now we have a, a bet, uh, we have a very good a bet answer to this uh, question is basically uh, due to the efforts of our uh, experimental friends. We, uh, we now see very beautiful measurements about the observables associated with the spins. And this slice sum, uh, just to give you some um, uh, um, important examples. So and the right, um, so the right uh, figure, uh, the, the 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 right upper figure shows here is the um, uh, plus the uh, polarization of the lambda showing this blue bullet and the polarization of the anti lambda hyperbolas. So this uh, and the experiment list has measured the uh, such um, polarizations for a variety of the uh, beam energies. I should emphasize that the uh, such measurement is motivated by the uh, early development by Xinian and Zhuotan around 2005. And the main idea is if you consider the non-central collisions, the uh, angular, will, uh, angular velocity of the system is non-zero and, uh, and the, the, such, angular will, uh, such angular velocity will polarize the um, polarized the, the lambdas, or uh, sometimes this is also referred as the effects of the uh, uh, vorticities. And, but it's worth emphasizing that the, um, the lambda, this polarization shown here is the phase space average of the polarizations. In fact, our uh, exper in experiment, you can also measure the polarization a differential polarization by which I mean how the polarization, how the direction of the polarization will depends on the momentum such as the rapidity, depends on the PT, and perhaps importantly, um, very importantly, it depends on the azimuthal angles in the transverse place. So um, what is also interesting is if you assume the main contribution to the differential measurement is coming from the effects of the vorticity, then many, many model calculations will tell you the behaviors projected along the longitudinal direction is, uh, is like uh, sine two phi as shown in this solid curve. In the data, you also show this, uh, you also see this um, sine two phi patterns, but with the opposite size. So this is a qualitative difference. And this is sometimes referred as the side puzzle of the differential uh, spin polarizations. Uh, I will return to this uh, this uh, this this point uh, later. And then finally, let me mention that the lambda is the uh, uh, lambdas are the fermions, but we can also uh, measure the bosons, the spin alignment or the spin density matrices, components of the spin density matrices of the bosons, the vector mesons. The results are equally interesting and uh, and uh, intriguing. So this is the references. So in short, uh, all those measurements suggest uh, two things. First, is that they, it's possible to measure the spin observable. Second is the coupling between the spin degree freedom and the median are, are highly non-trivial. And so I would say, if you have any questions, um, please stop me. And so let me uh, see a few more words about the significance of the loss of spin observables. If you ask a friend in the condensed, condensed matter community, they will tell you that the uh, spin, real, uh, uh, spin transport formula phenomena are important to explore the properties of the quantum materials. And uh, in the context of the QCD phase diagram, you can ask yourself a question. How does the number of the spin carrier changes as the temperature changes? Since the pions does not carry spins, but the quarks and gluons carry spins, what, do we, uh, what do you would expect is the number of the spin carriers uh, changes uh, dramatically uh, when, uh, when, the, when the, the confinement the confinement phase transition happens. So in this sense, so, so this, is a, uh, this, is a, this is a sketch demonstrate such dramatic changes. So in short, the, uh, in short, the polarization and the spin alignment Measurement, as I have, uh, as I just showed you in the previous test, suggest means that they can serve as a new probes to study the spin and the phase structure of the QCD uh, matters. And uh, another thing I want to mention is, if you uh, if you think about the proton spin puzzle, this tells us that the spin, the interaction of the spin degree freedom of QCD is highly non-trivial. And our hope is by studying the uh, spin observables in the QCD methods, we may offer the complementary information 
complementary to the study of occasion structures in understanding the spin dynamics of the QCDs. So, so okay. Yeah, so uh, the spin uh, quick question. Yes. A quick question. Yes. So, so you see that the the phase transition would generate a spin effect, but from the from what you showed previously, uh, it's uh, it's other way around, right? You actually see more. A spin effect of global polarization effects for no energy scattering instead of the high energy, right? So suppose I don't have any phase transition at all. There's no QCD matter, either no energy. Uh, so why is the spin effect still there? And um, I think there's a very uh, yes. Thanks for the question. So I think uh, uh, what this data, uh, my interpretation of this data is this shows the response of the medians to the um uh, uh to the rotations and uh, and and currently the understanding of of these trends is if you go to the lower beam energies, the angular velocity becomes larger. And what I'm saying here is the, uh, of course, the response to the angular velocity also depends on the number of spin carriers. My anticipation is the spin carriers will become smaller if we are in a hydronic phase as compared with the uh, quark ground plasma phases. But the magnitude of the total polarization is determined not only by the spin carriers, but also depend, determined by the um, uh, typical angular velocity, which also depends on the beam energy. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I and, have a uh, question. I think Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Yi. I also on, on this lattice calculation. Um, go back to the slide where you show the epsilon over t to the fourth. We have the next slide. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So the left one is familiar. I understand what's there. Is it actually possible to uh, the, to to calculate the right figure on the lattice rather than just sketch it? In other words, to know the the number of degrees of freedom carrying spin and and not just number of degrees of freedom generically. Um, I think you can uh, compute this in uh, uh, because essentially it's um, uh, because uh, in the field of theory you can define the number of the fermionic spin carriers, number of uh, Grunaudic spin carriers or the bosonic spin carriers. So I think as a matter of principle, uh, we, we can compute it. But uh, at this moment, I'm, I don't know is whether there are certain side problems or uh, which would have complicated. I, um, I need to think more, but I think as a matter of principle, you could, uh, given a microscopic theory, you could compute the change of spin carriers as a function of temperature. Thank you. Okay, good. Yes. <clears throat> yes, so return to the discussion. So you can, uh, we already see that the, uh, as a matter of principle, this has been, uh, because simple spin uh, carriers changes around the TCs. So this is a really useful um, probes to study the phase structure of the QC methods. And of course, to realize the uh, potential of such observables, there are many steps, uh, important steps we need to take. And at this step, uh, and at this stage, I think the most important one is really to to understanding the mechanisms for the spin polarization. So we need a systematic way to analyze the, how the spin polarization can be generated. And this is what I will uh, tell you about in the next part of my talk with a focus on the spin polarization generated through the spin momentum uh, correlations. So, okay, um, before talking about the spin momentum correlations, I want to first uh, uh, quickly tell you the familiar mechanism for the spin um, polarizations. If you consider, let us for simplicity, consider a system made by the weakly interacting fermions. And if you rotate this uh, assistance, because the, uh, uh, then, the, uh, then the direction of the spin denoted by S hat will be, uh, uh, will be aligned along the direction of the angular velocity denoted by omega here, because this configuration uh, is quite uh, is energetically favorable. And, and, and at, a, at a hydrodynamic scale, rotation is, it can be described by the vorticity. So this is the so-called the vorticity induced polarization, which was, um, uh, was, uh, was first discussed by Xin Li and Zhuo uh, uh, like 20 years ago. And now it's on a very extensive uh, theoretical and experimental studies. 
But the focus of my talk is about another kind of the mechanism for the spin polarization, which I think has been uh, widely uh, overlooked. Then, um, so let me give you another example of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, spin um, polarization generation uh, mechanism, which is the uh, which is the spin core effect, which has been already observed in a variety of the condensed matter materials. So this is the uh, so this is the illustration of the configurations. So if you consider some electric field along the x directions, and if you consider some um, uh, spin carriers moving along the y directions with velocity v. And uh, this spin forward effect that we are telling us that the spin polarization will, uh, will, uh, will in the direction which is transverse to the direction of the electric field and uh, the direction of the velocity or the momentum. So one important distinction between this spin forward effect and the rotation induced polarization is for the cases of the rotation, the spin, the direction of spin is not, does not depend on the momentum does not depend on the direction of the momentum or the velocity of the spin carriers, uh, spin carriers, but for the spin core effect, the direction is transverse to the direction of the velocities, meaning in these cases, the spin and the momentum are correlated with each other. So this is what I uh, would refer as the spin momentum correlations. And in fact, this uh, this is a ubiquitous phenomenon in many other physical uh, systems. And uh, one, uh, one example, which I think uh, um, uh, everyone here are very familiar with is if you look at the structure of the uh, of the protons, the uh, the momentum distribution of the u quark uh, or the protons in general is highly correlated with this direction of the spin. And my understanding is this is what the uh, the TMD wish to describe in the context of the nuclear uh, structures. So uh, our goal is to understand that this, how the spin and the momentum are correlated in the, uh, the QCD matters. And uh, I want to, uh, so here I want to make a, um, a point I want to make it here is, if you look at the global polarization, which is the phase space average the polarization of lambda hyperions produced in heavy collisions, such information, such correlation between the momentum and the, the uh, spin has been well, uh, uh, has been largely washed out. In contrast, if you look at the, the differential measurement, look at the how lambda polarization behaviors as a function of as you move and go as a function of rapidity, such measurements indeed gives a unique probe about the spin momentum and correlations, almost uh, follows from the uh, definitions. So finally, is there's a, a, a not uh, there's a comment is uh, originally people assumes that the, the differential spin polarization reflects how the vorticity distributed locally in the medium, but uh, um, but it turns out that this is the, uh, is not the case. What is really uh, generates such different? What really gives the characteristic feature of the spin? And, and differential distribution is such spin momentum correlations. And I will give more uh, uh, explanation about this in the uh, um, subsequent in the uh, subsequent uh, slides. Uh, in, um, but before that, let me uh, give you uh, some uh, uh, microscopic or some uh, semi-classical uh, explanation about what is the mechanism for the spin horror effect. So here I want to follow a very beautiful um, um, science paper by three uh, of uh, uh, by those three authors here. So um, so for simplicity, let us consider the carrier fermions. And um, because of the uh, the um, because the um, and what we can show is the uh, the, the carrier fermions carries a non-trivial and um, very curvature, which I will uh, denote it by uh, little b here. And this is a very, very curvature coming from the quantum effects. But if you wish to describe uh, the uh, motion of the fermions, the uh, semi-classically, this uh, quantum effect, in fact, we are enters. And the main result is if you turn on the electric field, this little b, this, this very curvature to get, and together with the electric field, we are generate a shift of the velocities. And this is the illustration of the configurations. So this is the electric field. This is very, uh, very phase, and this is the shift of velocities. 
Also, we should recall that for the terraformians, the direction of the spin is a, is a, um, is a slave to the direction of its momentum or the very curvatures. So this exactly, so this figure exactly shows the configuration of the spin for effect. And this also demonstrated that spin for effect is, is uh, closely related to the barrier curvatures of the, um, uh, of the fermions. So in other words, one way to think about this spin for, one way to think about this barrier curvature is, this is like some magnetic field, not lives in the real space, but lives in the moment space. And because of the presence of such very curvature fields, the spin and the, the spin, uh, the spin and the momentum we are developed the correlations were in the presence of the electric field. But another point I wish to make in this slide is the role of the electric field can also be replaced by other effective force, which acts on the um, acts on the fermions. In particular, if you consider hydrodynamic systems, the gradient of the densities, such as the gradient of chemical potential and the gradient of the temperatures can place the role of the, this such effective force or thermodynamic force. And, uh, uh, and consequently, they will divide, generate the um, spin, the correlation between the momentum and the spins in the wave, which is very similar to the standard spin horror effects. So in other words, now we can think about the heavy ion collision systems because in general, the system you're created in heavy ion collision is inhomogeneous. This means the gradient of hydrodynamic field, such as the gradient of flow, the gradient of energy and the charge densities and are non zeros. So in general, we would expect that those gradients, those gradient of hydrodynamic field will lead to the spin momentum and the correlations. So um, any questions so far? Okay, and so 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 far the discussion is quite qualitative, and then uh, our next goal is to try to systematically analyze this so all the effects coming from such hydrodynamic uh, gradient. We want to give a description which is also uh, systematic and uh, and uh, and uh, quantitative. So the right tool to do to serve the purpose is the so-called response series. So uh, so in general, response series is a theoretical method to describe the response of some mediums to the, to the external di disturbance or to the inhomogeneities. In particular, for the cases of the hydrodynamical gradient, what you can do is you can first expand the, uh, to the expansion in the gradient and then relate the expansion coefficients to the appropriate correlators. For example, if we are interested in observable O, what you can consider is the correlation between O and uh, this uh, observer all and the, the uh, stress energy tensors. The familiar example is uh, the, uh, the, the, in the usual hydrodynamic, uh, in the usual hydrodynamics, you write down the constitutive relations, and then you compute the transport coefficients, such as the shear viscosity by evaluating the correlation functions between the stress energy tensor and the stress energy tensors. So what we should do next is just applying the similar procedures to the observables, to the field theory quantities that is related to the spin polarizations. So the quantity, the object that we should study is the so-called axial wiggler fun functions, which by definition is given by, uh, uh, by the uh, pairs of the fermionic field weighted by the gamma matrices. And then you perform the uh, wiggler transform uh, transformations and because uh, you 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 insert such a gamma five uh, matrices, so this quantity you know the by curly a here it, it depends on the position, depends on time, and depends on momentum, and can be related to how the spin polarization vector is distributed in the um, phase space. So the next thing I will do is to do the gradient expansions. So in the red box, I write down all the possible um, uh, grid and uh, first all the terms in the gradient, including the vorticity divided by omega mu here, the gradient of beta, so beta is the worst of temperature. So this uh, tells us the effects from the gradient temperature. And also I write down the contribution from the shear, which is the symmetric part of the flow uh, trace list and the symmetric part of the free grid, uh, flow gradient. And to construct the expansions, there are some, uh, we can also uh, build up the tensors from the single particle momentum, including the pu mu, as well as the pu mu, 
uh, uh, Q mu mu, which is the which is the relativistic version of the uh, uh, of the single particle quadrupoles. And now we can just write down all the possible terms which is allowed by the symmetry, such as the contraction between the quadrupole and the shears. So this is the results. So, uh, so in this re, uh, in in this slides, I will show you the results for the uh, for neutral fluid, and then that has a focus on the uh, uh, expressions for for the axial regular functions projected along the directions transverse to the flow. Because physically, this quantity tells us that how the spin polarization looks like in the frame that the fluid at the rest. So the first thing you can write down is simply proportional to omega mu. So this is the usual the vorticity effects, but importantly is so you can write, write down the three additional terms. The second term here is the effects coming from the gradient of temperature and in the condensed matter community, this is called the spin length effect. So temperature gradient, we are generated the spin polarizations. Moreover, you can also can, uh, you can also consider contributions from the quadruple. So Q mu mu denotes quadruple, and uh, this quadruple can be coupled with the shear stress tensor, the, the symmetric part of the flow gradient. And you can, another thing you can write down is the contraction between the quadruple and uh, the, uh, and uh, the vorticities. So, um, so as I emphasized here you know, by this red box is in, in all the terms in such a, uh, in this, in this, uh, in this red box, the, um, the expression depends on momentum, which means that in the absence, in the presence of the hydrodynamic gradient, the spin direction is related to the direction of the uh, momentum. So um, another thing I want to um, point out is also those, uh, those coupling between the quadrupole and the hydrodynamic field are allowed by symmetry, but it has been uh, has never been discussed before. It, uh, it really has been ignored for years. Um, so the next thing is we were uh, the next thing we should do is just to determine the the uh, coefficients, the coefficients in such expansions. And, the fall, uh, and what we do is uh, as, uh, uh, we just follow the same strategy as we compute the shear viscosity. We evaluate the two point functions between the stress and the tensor and, uh, this, and the operators associated with the axial weak uh, functions. So, uh, so here, what I want to show you is the, um, uh, the one loop result for, for the general, uh, for, for general for, for generic fermions. So at this order, the coupling between the quadrupole and the vorticity is, is actually suppressed. And the remaining contribution, there are three remaining contributions from the vorticity, from the gradient temperature or spin length effect. And finally, is the new effect that shear induced the polarization coming from the coupling between the quadrupole and the, and, and the shear stress. Finally, the overall factor of this contribution is proportional to the density of this. Of the uh, of the fermions, so and um, FD denotes the Fermi Dirac uh, distribu uh, distributions. So um, we we checked that you can also use the quantum kinetic theory and uh, reproduce this uh, one of the results. And uh, the this new uh, our new friend, the shear induced polarization, has also been derived almost simultaneously by the uh, by the Bakatini uh, groups with a uh, um, different method. So, uh, so in what follows uh, in the uh, in the following phenomenological studies, I will consider in, uh, the I will we should use the one loop results, including contribution from Wittos velocity, T gradient, and the shear induced polarizations. But I want to uh, also mention this: our uh, our method is quite general and can be applied to uh, to include the higher loop effects. Or if if uh, or we could even imagine that one day we can evaluate those two point functions on the lattice or on the uh, com, uh, on the quantum computers. What does that mean? Is in my mind this response theory indeed it gives a more systematic way to extract the uh, physics of the spin momentum correlations. So now I want to uh, any questions. And so now I want to uh, say a little bit more about this new fact that the shear induced uh, uh, polarization and the discuss is the uh, is a phenomenological uh, uh, implications. So uh, to simplify the integration, so here I write down the uh, this effect in the space in the um in in terms of the spatial uh, um, 
spatial uh, um, um, spatial index. So one way to interpret this effect is this shears, this this rank two tensor shear can is a project uh, is contract with one one power of the momentum, and this uh, and this uh, and the, and the, this can be interpreted as some hydro dynamic force, and the curl of this hydrodynamic force is. Uh, generates the spin polarization much similar to the spin and um, uh, effect. And another way to think about it is, imagine we turn on some shear in the systems, such a shear will induce the stress energy tensor. Since the uh, angular momentum density, this rank two, three density node by M, depends on the T mu mu, so that the generation, so, so that the shear will generate T mu mu, will change this, uh, M uh, change M and the intent generated the spin polarizations when the for system where the orbital uh, angular momentum is coupled to the spin uh, degrees of freedom. So, uh, so, uh, so next, let me give you ex uh, ex uh, ex uh, a illustration under the physical consequences of uh, this effect. So, what I do here is just a plot of the standard shear flow profiles. So the flow is along the x direction, but uh, there's a gradient along the y directions. If you plug in the, uh, the formulas for the shear induced polarization, you can see and plot how the momentum of the, uh, of the, uh, of the fermions are distributed in this, P, uh, in this uh, uh, x and y place. So this is the, how it looks like. So which it tells you that the, the shear induced polarization will generate the very rich structures in the phase space. Or put it another way, shear induced polarization is a phenomenon which imaging certain anisotropy in the fluid into the anisotropy in the space space, in the momentum space. And finally, I want to talk about the observational signature of the spin horror effect. But before doing that, I want to also mention this in the crystals, in the liquid crystals, there's a causing effect, which is called a strain induced polarizations. If you create some displacement in such a crystals, they will generate the spin polarization in a specific way. And this is also very hot topics in the condensed communities. But now the fluid is not the crystals, which means that if you create some displacement, there's no, uh, uh, there's no energy, there's no penalty. What are uh, we are, uh, there's no energy cost. What will cost the energy is you generated some gradients. So that's why for the fluid, what we are generated polarization is the shear is the, so shears. So uh, uh, we know that in heavy collisions in general, the shear is sizable, it's comparable to the vorticity effects. So the question now we can ask is, can we see the, this uh, shear induced polarization or the seep in heavy and collisions? Or maybe a better word is, did we already see this seep effect in experimental data? And next question we also want to ask is, what can we learn? So to uh, so now I want to do some phenomenology. So and so we need to uh, we take the uh, hydrodynamic profile from the standard uh, AMPT plus the music models. We uh, Although we have uh, we have very good knowledge of the hydrodynamic profile due to the development in the last 20 years, there are still two important uncertainties in the uh, uh, in the analysis related to the spin degree freedoms. First of all, is strictly speaking, we don't know the details of how the speed degree uh, the hydronization of the spin degree freedoms. And the second thing is we don't have a good uh, quantitative models to describe the hydronic evolution of the uh, of the lambda spins. So for this purpose, what we do is we consider to the two benchmark scenarios. The first scenario is what we call the lambda equilibrium, which we assume that the lambda is quickly response to the presence of the hydrodynamic gradient. And, and, uh, and in the second scenario, we we assume that the lambda simply inherits the polarization of the strange parts, and the and the what you see, uh, what you see in the data of the lambda is purely is is essentially given by the polarization in the uh, in the strange parts. Of course, we uh, we we believe this those two benchmarks represent the two extreme cases with the reality seen somewhere in between. So that we show, what we show here only give you some qualitative uh, guidance on what we expect to uh, guidance on the 
uh, on the effects of uh, uh, some it should be only interpreted as some qualitative guidance. So now let me begin. Uh, now let me begin uh, showing you the result. So uh, what I plotted here is the spin polarization the lambda projected along the longitude the, uh, direction as a function of the azimuthal angles. So here I show the three results, three curves corresponding to the effect of the vorticity in the blue, effects of the T gradient in the green, and finally the effect of the uh, sieve, the effect of shear in the red. So uh, we see here that the contribution from the vorticity is uh, can be uh, can be uh, can be ignored. So I will focus on the competition between the effects of the gradient, T gradient, and the effects of the sieve or the shear. Which you see, they are um, they are opposite to each other. And another remark I want to make is the T gradient contribution is opposite to what you see in, uh, what you uh, what you see in the data. On the other hand, the sieve effects that give the, the right side, while the lower gives the right side. So now we uh, we can compare the contribution in the two scenarios. So the left panel shows the uh, uh, shows the results, uh, assuming lambda is fully response to the hydrodynamic gradient, and the right plot shows the polarization of the strange partners. So, and so an uh, important feature of uh, shear induced polarization is its importance also depends on the mass of the spin carriers. Therefore, in both cases, the effects of the T gradient, the effects of T gradient, and the effects of T gradient, and the effects of shear are competing with each other. But if you consider a uh, strange quark, the strange quarks with the smaller masses, eventually the strange quark, the eventually the sieve wins over the competitions. And if you add the two, you get the results, which is qualitatively agree with what you see in the data. So I'm talking about the, the longitudinal polarizations, but in experiment, they also measure the polarization projected along the um, red direction or the uh, reaction uh, play directions. So the direction is more, uh, but the, 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 the result, the story is more or less similar. The, there's a competition between the T gradient effect and the, the shear induced effect. But finally, in the stretch memory scenarios, in the stretch memory, the, the effects of shear wins over the uh, competition and you get the qualitative agreement with the, um, uh, with the data. So this slide summarizes our uh, phenomenological uh, studies. So the first, uh, Conclusion I want to make is the shear induced polarization of sieve effects are in, indispensable in the studies because you, you can see this purple curve is the results. Uh, so this dashed curve is results without the shear. This purple curve is with the shear. You can see the significant differences. And another uh, conclusion we made is the sieve, uh, in the, the sieve would eventually become dominant the differential polarizations in, in both Z direction and Y directions, assuming the lambda memorized the uh, polarization of strange quarks. So this is a quite interesting lesson, which is suggests that uh, by studying the lambda polarizations, we may get we may probe the properties of the QGP uh, itself. So um, finally, I want to uh, show you some recent results made by the um, uh, Alice collaborations. So what they computed here is the uh, second Fourier harmonics of the polarization projected along the longitudinal directions. And they show the results as a function of the centralities. So the this um, uh, so this uh, so this uh, so this curve, this dash dot curve is coming from the uh, computation including the shear induced polarization and assuming the stretch memory theory and we see the it also describe the trends of the um, data. So this brings me to the um, uh, the last slides on the uh, on the C effects. So I think given the current theoretical study and experiment data, I think the uh, the C this C effect is. Uh, the most uh, promising way to understand the side puzzle, the previous discrepancy between the uh, the theory prediction and uh, the uh, and the um, uh, differential spin polarization measurement, which the C we will see the we can recover the qualitative uh, agreement. And maybe in many talks you heard the people saying because of the side puzzles, one need to uh, formulate the spin hydrodynamics. But in our, uh, in my personal view, I don't think that this uh, how this method could solve the puzzle is uh, is not quite obvious. 
I would like to emphasize that clearly when we connect, make a connection to the observables, there are a variety of model uncertainties, including how the spin degree freedoms are freed out, how the hydronic evolution uh, affect the spins. Um, but to me, perhaps the most interesting and important one is uh, the result of the, in the phenomenology studies so far, we used the one loop results, but the QGP can be strongly coupled. How to take into account such the corrections to the one results definitely with the future studies. Uh, regardless, I still think the shear is sizable and this is a shear induced polarization is well, uh, is well grounded. And so that I think that maybe the most important question is not to ask how to resolve the side puzzle is to really answer what to, um, by way, what kind of the measurements, by what uh, what kind of the future theoretical efforts we could uh, claim the observation of this CP effect in QGP, because I think the CP is a very general effect, but the QGP might be the first detect detection among the all kinds of the fluids. And so I will move to the next uh, topics, but before that, any questions? Um, okay, uh, so uh, so now let me uh, briefly tell uh, uh, tell you uh, uh, some uh, some of our recent results to study another spin moment correlation uh, mechanism induced by the uh, um, mu gradient. So this is because this is particularly important for the second phase of the BMG scan programs, and also you may uh, observe similar. Phenomena uh, by looking at the uh, heavy ion data at the forward rapidity where the mu b is also uh, can be significant. So, so this is the basic formula uh, formula for the effects I want to talk about. So, uh, so, so put a long story short. Essentially, you can think about the grid and the mu b is like uh, some analog analog of the electric field. So that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this in the cases of spin core effect. The electrical field we are generated the spin polarizations. Similarly, the grid and the mu b we are also generate uh, the spin polarizations. Of course, you can place this uh, intuitive argument in a more uh, more uh, rigorous basis. So uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a series of the theory uh, theoretical studies. I think our contribution is we realize this this effect this uh, grid and the mu b induced polarizations indeed can be. Uh, can leave certain observational signatures in the heavy ion collision data. And I think this is particularly interesting because in contrast to, to the already known uh, spin horror effect materials such as semiconductor metals and insulators, the heavy ion collision system is a system whose theory, whose, which is described microscopically by the QCD and also uh, by QCD and it's uh, at a very high temperature and at a very high um, um, high densities. So uh, so we do the same. So now we uh, use the um, hydrodynamics. We use uh, hydrodynamics to determine the grid and mu b profile as well as other hydrodynamic um, um, profiles. So the result I'm showing here is the one representative result at the seven point seven GVs. So uh, uh, we showed the black curve corresponding to the lambda and the, the uh, orange curve corresponding to the uh, anti lambdas. So uh, what we can see here is if you don't consider the effects of the spin hole effect or SHA, then the uh, the uh, the orange dashed curve is above the um, uh, uh, so, uh, 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 above the black dashed curve, meaning the the anti lambda curve is above the lambda curves. But once you uh, turn on the contribution from the grid mu v, the hierarchy between lambda and lambda and any lambda is uh, flipped. So this means that uh, to study the uh, um, low energy spin polarizations, we indeed need to take into account this grid and mu v induced effect, which is really sizable at the lower beam energies. And another license we can draw in this figure is if we uh, is is uh, the, the net spin polarization is very sensitive to the signature of the spin for effect. The net spin polarization, I mean the difference between the uh, baryons and, and the embedded such as the difference between the lambda and, and the lambda. So for example, in these cases, the, uh, the difference even flip the side with and without SGEs. 
So now comes to our predictions for the signature of SL3. So, um, so, uh, so what we show here is the, uh, is the Fourier harmonics of the spin polarization, the net spin polarization, the difference between lambda and the anti lambda projected along the um, longitudinal direction. So this is showing the up panel and projected along the transverse place. So uh, now what we can, and, and again, the dashed curves is the uh, dashed curve is the, the uh, results without SH effect and the solid curve is the result including the SH effects. We can see the both the scenarios, the lambda equilibrium and the strange memory experience. But if you look at these figures, it's very easy to see that the, our proposed observables show the qualitative differences in both psi and collision energy dependence with and without the SHE. So this gives us the confidence that with such observables, we we may be also uh, we may be uh, able to see uh, see the evidence of the SHE in such hot and dense QCD methods. And another interesting thing I want to uh, tell you is that physically. This SHE converts the distribution of the baryon density into the spin spaces. And, 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 and for example, so what I show here is the bar initial baryon densities projected on the X and the repeatedly placed. And I, I plot I would plot here, uh, I show the results for the three different beam energies from the 200 GV to 7.7 GVs. And you can see the baryon density distribution transits from a double peak structure to the single peak structures. And correspondingly, we see the non-monotonicity behaviors of the SH3 observables first goes down and goes up. So this also means that uh, the precision measurement of such a spin core effect would also tell us the distribution of the baryon densities in at the BS2 energies and also this give us some important information about the equation state because there was the, uh, the, uh, the connection between the baryon density and the chemical dimension is related to the equation state. So that's very uh, exciting. And we look forward to the future uh, experiment and measurement. So with uh, that, I want uh, to- uh, e, e, I, e, Yes, e, yes, e, yes. Go back to the, what is the difference between up and and and, and bottom? Um, this on the left figure. What is the difference between up and down, the bottom figure? Yeah. So the um, the upper is the polarization project along the longitudinal direction. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see that. And, so that, that's and a, the, yeah, this one is a, yeah. This is the angular reaction play or the angular momentum direction or y direction. So this is what uh, the star normally measure, right? Yes, that's, that's right. right. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, oh. so this brings me to the uh, summaries. So uh, today I'm talking about is the uh, spin observables, the spin dynamics in the hot and the dense QCD methods. In particular, I want to emphasize that the differential spin polarization is very important because it probes the spin momentum correlation of the QCD methods. And we also demonstrated that with the response series, the standard linear response series, we could analyze the effects due to the hydrodynamic gradient in a systematic way. Two uh, examples of the spin momentum a correlation generated by the dynamic gradient are presented. One is the shear induced polarization. This is a general, we believe this is a general effect in the, in the class of fluid. And we possibly see the, such a signatures at both rig and HC. We also make the predictions for the spin hole effect induced not by electric field, but the gradient, but by the gradient of chemical potentials. I hope this will serve as a new prop to the um, baryon which QC this. So, so far I'm talking about the, the fermionic spin polarizations, but, uh, and what I, and, but in fact, the effects of shear will also contribute, we also found uh, in, the, in our preliminary studies that shear will give a very significant contributions to the vector down spin alignment and, uh, and, and, and 
and uh, severe environment. So it's uh, um, so in other words, the effect of shear is not only in the fermionic spin carriers, but also in the bosonic spin uh, carriers. So um, the one of the, my motivation is really to uh, to understand the, the generality of the momentum spin correlations in the QCD systems. Another uh, uh, one, uh, one such QCD system is the, uh, is the uh, color superconducting phases of the QCD matter, which might be relevant in the, um, uh, in the core of the, uh, of the neutral stars. So uh, uh, one thing we learned uh, recently is the Berry curvature will not only generate the spin horror effect, but it also will generate some um, interesting spin momentum correlation phenomenon in the spin one color supercon uh, superconducting phases. So this is the work we wish to publish soon with uh, another poster in my group, group Nori uh, Sogby. And uh, only very recently, I learned that uh, uh, if you look at the the um, the the, um, the nucleons, look at the inner structure of the protons, the analysis calculation also demonstrated that the shear force is highly non-trivial. And this is the risk, uh, is, uh, this is the work by Will Damon and uh, Fianna. And so this is an illustration of the shear force inside the protons based on the lattice question, uh, lattice based on lattice calculations. So one natural question I want to ask is, so why is there such a shear forces? We are also uh, generated uh, certain polarization patterns to be polarized patterns for the quarks and gluons inside of the protons. And ultimately, I hope with, with the study of the spin physics in the hot, uh, in the hot QCD matter, in the dense QCD matter and the inside the protons, we could get a comprehensive and uh, pictures about the spin structure of the QCD systems. I think uh, in, for this purpose, we are just beginning and many more you know, results are coming. So yeah, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Yi, for this very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. So we have time for some questions. Yeah, uh, maybe let me continue my question. Um, if you go back to the, the slides that I uh, asked a question about um, this projection of spin with result um, spin Hall effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, if you look at the um, the transverse projection, and when you don't have uh, spin hall effect, and the difference you s the difference in the dashed line essentially is caused by I assume caused by the presence of uh, uh, net baryon density, right, and the chemical potential. Uh, right. There yes. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, right, I think that we, uh, in, in details, we find the two reasons. Uh, one reason is the one um, uh, you already pointed out with Longan and the train, which is the uh, distribution function also depends on the barrier densities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, the, uh, uh, that's the first reason. And uh, in practice, we found that there's another more important part, more important reason is the, the, the the lambda and the anti lambda are not freeze out, are actually freeze out at the different times, or at the or um, which means that they actually probe the different stages of the QGP evolution. Oh, you mean this is, lambda, this oh, is yeah. another reason. You have different freeze. You have yes, different lambda for lambda lambda bar. Right. Yes. I I see. I see. So that's the reason because I yeah we checked it. yeah because I remember if you only consider the net baryon effect uh, in the distribution, the, the, pro the difference between polarizing lambda and bar is much smaller than what you show here. And- uh, uh, Right, it's a smaller, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then you said here, you essentially, and uh, the, the difference also come from the late, a different freeze out temperature for lambda lambda bar. Right, yes. I see, I see. My so okay. My other question is regarding to your shear induced polarization, and mm -hmm. uh, and definitely you you demonstrate that that will definitely give you different this azimuth angle dependence, right? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Of polarization. Maybe yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. But but do you actually reproduce the in the ang the azimuth angle integrated? You know the net integrated uh, the polarization as what the star is measuring. There's energy dependence. Can you mm. reproduce this with the inclusion of this shear induced uh, spin polarization? Uh, so I think that's a very important uh, comment. So I think let me uh, first tell you is the conceptually is this shear induced polarization is coupled by the quadrupole, which means that uh, if you consider the fluid at the rest, this contribution to the global polarization is zero in the idealized situation, because just by definition, the integration of a quadrupole for isotropic system is zero. I and see. In practice, oh. it gives yeah. I see. I see. So you this will contribute. This will not contribute to the net polarization when you integrate over azimuth angle. That's what you say. Um, in the idealized system, is ideal is is zero, but and in practice, it's tiny. I see. I see. But and they do right. Yeah, okay, so. so yeah. 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 Yeah, please. Yeah, I see. I, I see what so, it is. So yes. Yes. And in fact, is, what is interesting is you can think about, you can also think about this expansion is like the multiple uh, moment expansion. And only the first turn in the multiple expansion will contribute to the phase space average in the idealized situations. Mm. So, so that's what I want to say. In, uh, there are very rich structures in the momentum and uh, uh, spin correlations, but if you do the average, you simply get a zero. Maybe this, or, or you just average everything maybe in this patch, you, you just get a zero results. Yeah, yeah of course, of course, yeah. Yes, yes. So perhaps that's the reason this has been overlooked uh, looked for years. Yeah. Okay, thank you, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Jim, you had a question. Yes, uh, that was a, a very stimulating, <clears throat> excuse me, very stimulating talk. Uh, but everything you said surprised me, and I suppose that's my fault, not yours. Um, in particular, uh, what you called strangest memory. I'm surprised that you can generate anything in a QCD uh, plasma system that would overwhelm that. Uh, so. That then that makes me think that it must be a high energy bias that I'm carrying with me, and therefore go to slide 29. If, if I have a, a high energy bias and I start to 29, 29, 29, or yeah, is this uh, two nine? Yeah, uh, if I do an energy scan, what happens as I get close to the critical point? Am I going to be surprised again? Mm -hmm. um, so I think I would agree is in the certain, um, uh, I agree is uh, uh, if you got very, very low energies and maybe the uh, QGP stages is very, uh, very short. And so that's uh, actually, actually this is one of the reason is in this plot, we show the both results for the strange and the lambda and the, um, uh, and what do we, uh, I think oh, the main message we were, uh, I completely agree with you that uh, why the strangers are important at the lower energy is quite, um, uh, it's not clear. So that, but the main message of this plot is uh, no matter whether you consider number or the strange, you see the qualitative difference for the result with and without the, uh, the effects reduced by the um, baryon chemical potentials. And does, uh, does that answer your question, Jim? Um, not, not really. Um, in other words, if, if I get close to the QCD critical point, uh, other observables fluctuate. Uh, you mm -hmm. seem to be just su suggesting that the shear force and the, and the strange memory um, are monotonically continuous from higher energy. Is that? A fair summary of what you said. Um, and so I think maybe um, uh, you are worried about is uh, suppose we are in the vicinity of the QCD critical point. If it's there, I 
Yeah, I believe the results need to, I, I think that the one loop results we show here need to be, uh, even before talking about stretch memory, et cetera, I think that the one loop result needs to be revisited just because the effects of the fluctuation is very, um, were, were very strong and, uh, and uh, clearly this uh, simple one loop calculation should not apply. And I think we, uh, I would really love to revisit uh, all those uh, calculations by considering the system in the vicinity of the critical point. So in that sense, I wouldn't say that everything goes smoothly if, if the, indeed, if indeed there's a critical point. And I also want to add is the, in the previous slides, the result we show indeed in the equation state, we compute all the results. We did not assume there's a critical point in the equation state. So, so in that sense, I agree with you. This is something we didn't, we have not yet taken into account in, at this moment. Okay, thanks. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just had one question for the um, slide 29. Um, so the, so your calculations doesn't involve any magnetic field or because the lambda and the lambda bar polarization was predicted to show some split uh, uh, right. from the presence of the magnetic field. Yeah. But now uh, I think you don't include any magnetic field in your calculations, right? In uh, next slide. Yeah. And, but yes, you, see, you see a split uh, for the, between lambda and lambda bar in this now. So yeah, could you maybe explain? Yes, so, yes, thank you for your comments. So I think we thought about it and uh, for several reasons, we didn't uh, include the magnetic field in these computations. I think the first reason is just uh, um, uh, in the standard picture, we assume the magnetic field is more, more or less homogeneous and uh, along the right directions. What does that mean is uh, we don't anticipate that this effect will generate a splitting in the differential distributions, as we just discussed, okay. uh, the differential results averages to zero. So in other words, we, uh, we, our anticipation is for the polarization along the right direction, the, um, the magnetic field will only give a contribution to the global, but not to the differential one. And the second one is we also show the results in uh, uh, about uh, the polarization project along the Z direction. So it's not obvious that why the magnetic field will affect the polarization in such longitudinal directions. And finally, I want to say there's a huge uncertainty on the lifetime of the magnetic field. So, so that's the reason we, um, we didn't include it, but of course, in future, if someone can construct some very uh, reliable model about the, the evolution of the magnetic field as well as the um, their spatial distributions, we would uh, love to see how uh, how those would uh, contribute to this uh, spin core effect observables. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think we had uh, quite a lot of questions and a nice discussion. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, Yi, for this uh, very nice talk again. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you so much. Okay, okay. okay. bye. Okay. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.